The Billionaire's Disguise Inside a lavish penthouse overlooking the bustling city of Lagos, Chukwemeka, Okoro, a young billionaire paces the floor. His apartment is filled with expensive artwork and state-of-the-art technology. Despite his wealth, Chukwemeka is lonely. He yearns for a genuine connection, not one influenced by his immense fortune. Chuck Wemeka, talking to himself. There has to be someone out there who loves me for me, not for my money or my cars. Chuck Wemeka hatches a plan. He decides to pose as a driver to find true love. He calls his friend and confidant Kunle to discuss his idea. Kunle, you want to pretend to be a driver? Are you serious? Yes, Kunle. It's the only way to find someone who loves me for who I am. I can't keep meeting women who only see dollar signs. Chokwemeka moves into a modest apartment in Surulere, leaving behind his penthouse and designer suits. He adopts a new identity, Emeka, a driver earning a humble salary of 50,000 naira, 120 per month. He trades his Rolls-Royce Phantom worth $450,000 for a more inconspicuous Toyota Corolla. Emeka, this is it, a new life, a new me. Emeka starts his new job as a driver for a successful lawyer, Kioma, who is known for her demanding nature. He arrives promptly and waits for her outside the office building. Kioma, are you my new driver? Emeka, yes ma. My name is Emika. I'm here to take you wherever you need to go. Emika dates a woman named Neka while working as Kioma's driver. Neka, attracted to Emika's kindness, initially seemed interested. However, she soon shows her true colors. Neka frequently embarrasses Emika, ridiculing him for being a driver. She complains about his humble lifestyle and mocks his attempts to make her happy. On her birthday, Emeka plans a surprise dinner with his modest savings. However, Neka stands him up and goes out with another man who takes her to an expensive restaurant. Neka texting Emeka, Sorry Emeka, but I deserve better. I need someone who can give me the finer things in life. Emeka's heart ached, but his resolve grew stronger. He knew the path to true love wouldn't be easy. Over the next few weeks, Emeka drives Kioma around Lagos. They engage in small talk and Emeka learns about Kioma's life and her passion for helping the underprivileged. Despite her stern exterior, Emeka sees a compassionate side of her. One evening, while driving her home, they get stuck in Lagos traffic. Kioma, frustrated, starts venting about her day. Emeka listens patiently and offers a few kind words. Emeka, it's tough, Ma, but you're doing great work. You're making a difference. Kiyoma looks at him, surprised by his empathy. Kiyoma, thank you, Emeka. I needed to hear that. Kiyoma invites Emeka to a charity event she's organizing. She appreciates his support and kindness. At the event, Emeka helps with various tasks and even donates anonymously. Kioma notices his dedication and starts seeing him in a new light. Kioma, Emika, you're not like any driver I've ever met. There's something different about you. Emika, I'm just a man trying to do the right thing, Ma. Kioma, intrigued by Emika, invites him to her family home for a weekend visit. Emika meets Kioma's parents, siblings, and nieces who are all welcoming but curious about Kioma's driver friend. Kioma's parents had another suitor in mind for Kioma, Obina, whose parents work for Emeka and manage one of his hotels. Obina, unaware of Emeka's true identity, meets Kioma's family during Emeka's visit. Obina, Kioma, I don't understand why you would bring a driver home. My father is the CEO of a big hotel and we have everything. Why settle for less? Obina looks at Emeka disdainfully. Obina, you should know your place, driver. You don't belong here. Kioma is visibly upset, but Emeka remains calm. During the visit, Kioma's nieces express their wish to buy new school supplies. Emeka, wanting to help, writes each of them a check for one million naira each 
2400 and tells them to cash it at the bank. The nieces look at the checks and laugh, thinking it's a joke. Niece, Uncle Emeka, you're funny. Where would a driver get this kind of money? Emeka, trust me, it's real. Go ahead and cash it. The nieces take the checks, still giggling, and leave to cash them. Kioma and her family exchange puzzled glances. Kioma's father, Emeka, are you sure about this? A driver giving out such huge amounts? Emeka just smiles. Trust me, sir. You'll see. To further humiliate Emeka, Obina invites Kioma's family and Emeka to lunch at the hotel his father manages. Kioma insists on bringing Emeka along. Obina, come to our hotel for lunch. My father would love to meet Kioma's family. Upon arriving at the hotel, Obina greets his guests with a smirk. He calls his father to come and meet the guests, intending to flaunt their wealth and status. Obina, Dad, come meet our guests. Obina's father, Mr. Nwosu, rushes down, eager to impress. When he sees Emeka, he is shocked and immediately starts prostrating. Mr. Nwosu, Chief Okoro, Sir, welcome to our hotel. Everyone around notices the respect and deference Mr. Nwosu shows Emeka. Obina is confused and embarrassed. Obina, Dad, why are you treating him like this? He's just a driver. Mr. Nwosu, Obina, shut up. This is Chukwu Emeka Okoro, the owner of this hotel and many others. He's a billionaire and my employer. Obina's face turns pale as the truth sinks in. Kioma and her family are in awe. Kioma's father, Emeka, how did you get this much money? Emeka looks at Kioma, knowing it's time to reveal the truth. Emeka, I have something to tell you all. My name isn't really Emeka. I'm Chukwu Emeka Okoro, the billionaire. I've been pretending to be a driver to find true love. Kioma is stunned, her eyes wide with disbelief. Kioma, what? Why would you pretend to be a driver? Chukwu Emeka, I wanted to find someone who loved me for who I am, not for my money, and I found that person in you, Kioma. At the bank, the nieces present the checks. The teller looks at the checks, then at the nieces, and proceeds to verify them. Upon recognizing Chukwu Emeka Okoro's signature, the teller's eyes widen in shock. Teller, please wait here for a moment. The teller quickly goes to the bank manager, who immediately authorizes the checks. Knowing Chukwu Emeka is one of their prominent customers, the teller returns with the cash, leaving the nieces in shock. Niece too, it's real. Uncle Emeka's check is real. They rush back home, excitedly showing the money to the astonished family. Kioma and her parents are in awe, realizing Emeka's true identity. Kioma's father, Emeka, you really are Chukwu Emeka Okoro. Kioma's mother, we had no idea. Why didn't you tell us? Kioma, I can't believe you went through all this just to find true love. Kioma takes a moment to process the revelation. She looks at Chukwu Emeka, realizing that the man she fell for is the same, regardless of his wealth. Kioma, you didn't need to hide who you are from me, Chukwu Emeka. I appreciate the gesture, but it's your heart that matters to me, not your bank account. Chukwu Emeka, does that mean you still want to be with me? Kioma smiles, tears in her eyes. Kioma, yes, it does. Chukwemeka moves back into his penthouse, this time with Kioma by his side. They start a new chapter together, filled with love and mutual respect. Chukwemeka continues his philanthropic efforts, inspired by Kioma's dedication to helping others. Chukwemeka, I found what I was looking for. Kioma, true love. Kioma, and I found a partner who shares my passion for making the world a better place. Chukwemeka plans a special proposal on a private beach. Surrounded by candles and the sound of waves, he gets down on one knee and asks Kioma to marry him. Chukwemeka, Kioma, will you marry me and make me the happiest man alive? Kioma, tears in her eyes, nods. Kioma, yes, Chukwemeka, a thousand times yes. Chukwemeka and Kioma live happily ever after, building a life filled with love, laughter, and a shared commitment to making a difference in the world. Their story becomes an inspiration to many, proving that true love transcends wealth 
and status. And so the billionaire found his true love not in the riches he possessed, but in the heart of a woman who loved him for who he truly was.